one would assume the title of Princess Royal to be automatically inherited by the eldest daughter of the British monarch. But this is not the case. The title is given to the eldest living daughter of the British monarch, so long as the previous holder of the title is no longer alive. There have been seven Princess Royals. This video will focus on each of their lives. Princess Mary, Princess Royal and Princess of Orange was the first Princess Royal. She was the eldest daughter of King Charles I of England and Henrietta Maria of France. She was born on the 4th of November 1631 at St James's Palace and was baptised soon after birth due to her poor health. She had eight siblings but only Charles, James, Henry and Henrietta survived adulthood. Mary grew up in St James's Palace, Richmond Palace and Hampton Court. Mary and her sisters were educated by the Countess of Roxburgh. Mary was talented in dancing and was graceful and polite. Her mother wanted her children to be brought up Catholic and she attempted to introduce Mary to the faith, but this was stopped by her father. When Mary was eight years old, she received her first marriage proposal from William of Nassau, the future William II, Prince of Orange. Her father rejected the offer as he wanted to marry Mary to Balthazar Charles, Prince of Asturias. In order for this marriage to take place, Mary would need to convert to Catholicism, which she refused. And her mother was anti-Spanish and against this alliance. Another proposal from Charles I Louis, Elector Palatinate, also fell through. During the 1630s and 1640s, tensions grew amongst the different factions in England over religion, morality and politics. Mary's mother, who was Catholic, became more unpopular due to this fact. Around 1640, King Charles I renewed negotiations with William. Charles hoped that the Dutch royals would help to maintain royal power in England in the event of an uprising. The prince and princess were wed on the 2nd of May 1641 at the Chapel Royal in Whitehall Palace. After the ceremony, William returned to the Netherlands, while Mary remained in England. Under the marriage contract, William would provide her with an income and that Mary could still worship in the faith of the Church of England. In the event of his untimely death, Mary would receive an allowance of 10,000 livres a year and two residences for her use. In 1642, Mary and her family fled to Hampton Court as the situation in England worsened. In February, the Queen and Mary left for the Netherlands. That same year, Mary was named Princess Royal by her father. Henrietta Maria persuaded the Dutch government to provide a ship and arms for Charles in 1643. In November 1643, Mary and William had a second marriage ceremony. Mary worried for her father and in December 1646 she urged him to flee to the Netherlands, which he refused. Mary grew close to her aunt, Elizabeth, the exiled former Queen of Bohemia, but had a cold relationship with her mother-in-law, Amalia, whom she avoided. On the 14th of March 1647, Prince Frederick Henry of Orange died, and Mary's husband became the Prince of Orange, with Mary as Princess of Orange. In 1649, Mary's father was executed, and she helped many English royals and royalists flee. In 1647, Mary suffered a miscarriage, and had difficulty conceiving again until 1650, when she gave birth to a son named William. He was born eight days after his father's death, and on Mary's 19th birthday. As the titles of Stadtholder of the Netherlands and Prince of Orange were not inheritable, William did not receive the titles immediately. Mary wanted to name her son Charles, but her mother-in-law wanted to name him William, as did Mary's husband. Amalia also wished to be the child's legal guardian. The Supreme Court ruled that guardianship would be shared between Mary, her mother-in-law, and William II's brother-in-law, Frederick William, Elector of Brandenburg, as a neutral party. 
Mary was not popular in the Netherlands, which was sympathetic to the causes of Oliver Cromwell. They forbade her to accept any of her English relatives at court after she accepted her brother Charles in 1651. In 1652, Mary's son was officially elected as Stadtholder of Zeeland and eventually the rest of the Netherlands. In the Netherlands, Mary received numerous marriage proposals, but she turned all of them down. In 1658, her mother-in-law attempted to gain the post of sole regent for her grandson, but Mary, along with the Supreme Court, thwarted Amalia. In May 1660, Mary learned that the English monarchy had been restored and the ascension of her brother Charles as king. Her restored status as an English princess helped the Dutch public to grow more tolerant towards her. In September 1660, Mary sailed to England, where she discovered that her brother, Charles, had recognised the marriage of her brother James to Anne Hyde, and that any children of that marriage would be princes and princesses of England with succession rights. This upset Mary and she cut her trip short. That same month, her brother Henry died of smallpox. In December of that year, Mary also fell ill with smallpox. Her mother rushed to her bedside and attempted to convert her to Catholicism, but Mary refused. The Queen persuaded her to use her French doctor, which proved fatal to Mary, as the doctor was a supporter of bloodletting. Mary signed her will on the 24th of December 1660 and died that same day. Mary asked her brother Charles to protect her son's interests. His guardian now was his grandmother Amalia. Anne, Princess Royal and Princess of Orange was the second child of King George II of Great Britain and Caroline of Ansbach. She was the second holder of the title Princess Royal. She was an Anglophile and tried to promote English interests in the Netherlands. Anne was born at Herrenhausen Palace in Hanover on the 2nd of November 1709. She was named after Anne, Queen of Great Britain. As a child she learned German, French, English and she was taught to play the harpsichord by George Friedrich Handel. After this she remained a supporter of Handel for life. Anne had seven siblings, but only six survived to adulthood. Frederick, Amelia, Caroline, William, Mary and Louise. In 1714, Anne's grandfather became King of Great Britain and Anne and her family moved to England. In 1720, Anne contracted smallpox. She survived the disease and two years later her mother helped to popularise the practice of inoculation. Her mother had Anne's sisters, Amelia and Caroline, inoculated against the disease successfully. Anne's face was scarred by the disease and she was not considered to be as beautiful as her sisters. On the 30th of August 1727, George II created Anne Princess Royal. A potential marriage between Anne and King Louis XV of France was considered. However, the plans were thrown out when the French insisted Anne convert to Catholicism. On the 25th of March 1734, Anne married William IV, Prince of Orange. William was Anne's only choice of marriage, as he was Protestant and a monarch. The couple honeymooned in Kew before departing for the Netherlands. Anne soon became homesick when William went on campaign in the Rhineland and she travelled back to England. She believed she was pregnant and felt that the child should be born in her homeland as this child would be in the line of succession to the British throne. Both her husband and her father were against this decision. Her father even commanded her to return to Holland. She became pregnant in 1736 but her daughter was stillborn. Anne did not get on well with her mother-in-law, Mary Louise of Hesse Castle, and she was not popular. She believed in British superiority, neglected her duties, and kept to herself and her own interests. Her relationship with William was the complete opposite. At first they had a distant relationship, but it flourished into a romance full of happiness. 
Her first surviving child was Carolina, born in 1743. She had two more children. Anna was born in November 1746, but she sadly passed away a month later. Her only son, William, was born in 1748. In 1747, William became the stadtholder of all seven United Provinces, followed by a reform that made his authority hereditary. William and Anne moved to The Hague. On the 22nd of October 1751, William IV died and Anne became the regent for her young son William V. She held all prerogatives held by the stadtholder except the military duties. Though hard-working, Anne was arrogant and this made her unpopular. During the 1750s, tensions increased between Holland and Great Britain, placing her in a difficult position. Much of Anne's policies focused on defending the authority of the government over the rights of the Dutch states. The reform of the hereditary post of stadtholder had been introduced by her husband and Anne defended it following his death. Her rule was harsh and resented by the people, but she effectively consolidated the new hereditary stadtholder rule in the Netherlands. Anne passed away of dropsy on the 12th of January 1759 at the age of 49. Her mother-in-law, Marie Louise, acted as regent until her death in 1765. Finally, Anne's daughter, Carolina, acted as regent until William V reached the age of 18 in 1766. Charlotte, Princess Royal, was the eldest daughter of George III. She was born on the 29th of September, 1766. Her parents had only sons by this point, and when she was born, they were delighted to have a daughter for once. Like all her siblings, Charlotte was inoculated against smallpox in 1768. As the eldest daughter of the monarch, it was assumed by most that Charlotte would marry someone important, and her education was considered to be of the utmost importance. She started her formal education at only 18 months old, learning languages, history, geography, music, art, needlework and spinning. Her parents loved to show off their children, and when she was three years old, Charlotte took part in her first tableau, where she danced with her older brother, George. They continued to show off their children, which made Charlotte very uncomfortable. After a bad event, where a hearse was driven into the palace courtyard, the king and queen decided to never repeat the experience. Charlotte grew up under a strict regime, imposed by her mother. She woke up early, ate plain food, and was never let out of her parents' sight. Court life was monotonous. The monotony was interspersed with outings to places like the Royal Academy, Oxford University, and Egham races. They sometimes watched plays or listened to musical concerts at home or at the theatre. Charlotte was shy and lacked confidence. As the oldest, her mother expected her to be responsible for her younger sisters. This made her unpopular with them as she was inclined to make up stories about them to her parents. She was insecure and hated being teased. She felt her parents did not love her as much as her other siblings. She felt like a slave rather than a daughter and grew increasingly bitter over her mother. The princesses were rarely allowed to interact with members of the opposite sex. They felt it was more of a nunnery than a palace and all of them yearned for freedom. When Charlotte was young, the family was small and her parents got to spend more time with each of her siblings. However, the family soon grew and her father suffered from deteriorating mental health. Her childhood was not as utopian as her parents had wished for her. On the 18th of May 1797, Charlotte was wed to Frederick, hereditary prince of Württemberg. In December of that year, Frederick became the Duke of Württemberg. Frederick and Charlotte had one stillborn daughter together. After the French army occupied Württemberg in 1800, the Duke and Duchess fled to Austria. In 1801, Frederick concluded a treaty with France and they returned to Württemberg. 
he also became the Elector of Württemberg in 1803. In exchange for providing France with a large armed force, Napoleon, the Emperor of the French, recognised Frederick as the King of Württemberg in 1805 and he assumed his throne on the 1st of January 1806. Frederick's joining of the Confederation of the Rhine made Frederick enemy of his father-in-law, George III. Incensed by his son-in-law's assumption of the title of king, George refused to address his daughter as Queen of Württemberg. In 1813, Frederick changed sides and went over to the Allies. In 1816, Frederick attended the Congress of Vienna, where he was confirmed as the king. He died in October of that year. After the death of her husband, Charlotte continued to live at Ludwigsburg Palace. And in 1819, she became a godmother of her niece, Princess Victoria of Kent, the future Queen Victoria. In 1827, Charlotte returned to England to have surgery for dropsy. While in London, Charlotte lived in St. James's Palace and made visits to her family. She returned to Württemberg in October 1827 and passed away a year later on the 6th of October 1828. Victoria was the eldest child of Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom and Prince Albert of Saxe, Coburg and Gotha. She was born on the 21st of November, 1840. Her parents had hoped for a son and heir and were disappointed when their first child was a girl. Even the doctor that delivered the baby knew of the disappointment her birth would cause when he announced to the Queen that she had given birth to a daughter. Upon hearing that they had a daughter, the Queen remarked, Don't worry, the next one will be a boy. Victoria was lovingly called Vicky by her family for the rest of her life. Though Victoria did love her daughter, her relationship with Vicky was distant, perhaps due to Victoria's own upbringing. Albert quickly devised an educational regime for his daughter. Vicky went to great lengths to please her parents and grew up to be an intelligent young woman on par with her father's intellect. Vicky learned everything from mathematics to philosophy and became very liberal in her thinking. From the age of 18 months, she began to learn French and at the age of four, she was fluent in both French and German. From a young age, Vicky's parents searched for a suitable husband for their daughter. Prince Frederick William of Prussia was chosen and Vicky met him for the first time at the Great Exhibition in 1851. Eager to impress, Vicky made a good impression on the prince and the pair remained in contact when the prince returned to Prussia, sending letters to each other. Four years later, in 1855, Frederick returned to Britain and asked for the young princess's hand in marriage. At 15, she was too young to marry, and her parents asked that they wait until Vicky was 17. The Prussian court were outraged at the marriage proposal, believing the British monarchy to be weak as a constitutional monarchy. They also did not think that the Princess Royal was a suitable match for the future King of Prussia. The British press were also not a fan of the groom either. Vicky's own mother worried that her daughter was not beautiful and tall enough for the Prince, but she needn't have worried. The pair were in love. For the next two years, the wedding details were finalised with much arguments between the two families. Vicky wanted to bring two of her ladies-in-waiting with her to Prussia, but she was refused by her future in-laws. The Prussian royal family demanded that as the groom's family, they should have the final say in the wedding matters. They believed that the couple should wed in Prussia but Queen Victoria was never one to not get her way and refused to allow the couple to wed outside Britain. Despite all the fighting in the families, Vicky and Frederick did have a fairy tale wedding in St. James's Palace on the 25th of January, 1858. As the bride of a foreign prince, 
Vicky was to move to Prussia after the wedding. Though a wonderful start to their married life, things would only get worse for Vicky when she moved to Berlin, with her in-laws intent on making Vicky's life a living hell. Frederick's uncle, King Frederick William IV of Prussia, was not happy with the match and he made it known through his actions. He gave the young couple a derelict wing of the Berlin Royal Palace. It was outdated and in disrepair. Vicky received a cold welcome from her new homeland and high expectations of her duties were placed on her shoulders. She was expected to attend formal dinners and events almost every night, staying up past midnight before waking up at dawn to greet guests. In order to fit in with her new family, Vicky had to do things their way, oftentimes placing herself in her mother's wrath. When the Duchess of Orleans, a relative of both Vicky and Frederick, died, Vicky had to make a decision that would damn her no matter what she chose. The Prussian court mourned for a week, while the British court mourned for a month. Vicky chose to follow the Prussian court, and Queen Victoria berated her daughter for not following the English traditions, sending many demanding letters to her daughter, only stopping at the behest of Prince Albert. Vicky loved to garden and hoped to continue to do so in Prussia. She began to use English techniques on the gardens of her new home, but insulted the Prussian gardeners' gardening skills while doing so. Despite being members of the royal family, Vicky and Frederick struggled financially. The king gave Frederick an allowance, but it was not enough for the couple to make ends meet, as they were expected to dress finely. Vicky had to dip into her own dowry. Like her mother, Vicky had many children. Within a year of marriage, she was pregnant, and in January 1859, she gave birth to her first child, a son named Willem. Her first delivery was traumatic. The maid delayed getting a doctor when Vicky went into labor, and Vicky nearly died during the delivery. Her son was in the breech position, making the delivery long and difficult. Eventually, her son was born, but with a nerve injury to his left arm, which left Willem with Herb's palsy. Vicky was embarrassed by her son's disability and felt it reflected badly on her. When she saw the extent of her newborn's disability, the doctors tried to console the princess, telling her that the arm would heal. It didn't, and by the time Willem was an adult, his left arm was much shorter than his right arm. Vicky went to extreme lengths to try to cure her son's disability, not wanting to accept her son as he was. She would tie his uninjured arm behind his back, hoping that by restricting that arm, he would have to use his left arm. Wilhelm was also subjected to electrotherapy almost every day of his young life and animal baths in which his left arm was placed in the body of a freshly slaughtered hare. These treatments were abusive and did not cure nor help his condition. They caused the prince great distress and he grew to hate his mother. Vicky went on to have a further seven children. Charlotte, Henry, Sigismund, Victoria, Valdemar, Sophia and Margaret. None of the other births were as traumatic as her first. In 1861, her father died suddenly at the age of 42, plunging her mother into deep mourning for the rest of her life. Vicky was devastated at the death of her beloved father and she returned to Britain to comfort her grieving mother and family and also to attend the funeral. In 1866, Vicky's fourth child, Sigismund, died tragically at the age of 21 months, after falling ill with meningitis. She received little support from those around her, and Vicky was left to mourn for the loss of her child by herself. Her youngest, Voldemar, would also tragically pass in 1879 at the age of 11, again receiving very little support from the Prussian court. 
One of Vicky's decisions would go on to have catastrophic consequences for Prussia, although that would not occur until well after Vicky's own death. She hired a tutor for her children, and Willem was influenced by him, believing in his own divine right to rule autocratically, which influenced how he would later rule in life. The people hated Vicky, and she tried everything to get them to like her. She set up a military hospital to tend to the wounded during the endless conflict that plagued her country. But the king demanded that she stop her theatrics of charity. Nothing she did would make the people like her, as she and her husband were liberal and the German people were not. Vicky's husband's health began to fail. Frederick had issues with his throat and it would swell to the point where he had difficulty talking and breathing. The doctors diagnosed him with a cancerous tumour, recommending that he have it surgically removed. Despite the advice, Frederick and Vicky refused any treatment which caused outrage amongst their surviving children. Willem travelled to see them and accused his mother of being happy that her husband was dying. Frederick's father, Willem I, died on the 9th of March 1888, and Frederick became Frederick III. Frederick was more of a shadow king, as he was gravely ill and would not be king for long. Vicky wanted to protect her legacy, knowing that once her son became king, he would destroy her reputation. She had boxes of her letters sent to Windsor Castle in Britain for safekeeping. Frederick ruled for only 99 days, dying on the 15th of June, 1888. Willem became king and immediately betrayed his mother. He had her private residences ransacked and searched for incriminating information. Nothing was found due to Vicky's quick thinking. Vicky was excluded from court and worked for charitable organisations like the Red Cross. By 1898, her health had begun to fail. Vicky was suffering from terminal breast cancer and she devoted her final years to art and spent long hours writing letters. Her illness often caused her to spend long hours in bed. Only months after her mother's own death, Vicky passed away on the 5th of August 1901. She was buried beside her husband in the Royal Mausoleum at Potsdam. Princess Louise Princess Royal and Duchess of Fife was the eldest daughter and third child of Edward VII of the United Kingdom and Alexander of Denmark. Known for being shy and quiet, Louise was a low-key member of the British royal family. Louise's birth was not without difficulty. Her mother, Alexandra, became ill with rheumatic fever during her pregnancy. Her mother was encouraged not to use chloroform, a painkiller, during the labour because the doctors felt it would worsen the Princess of Wales' condition. The labour was painful as a result when Louise entered the world on the 20th of February 1867. Louise grew up with three brothers and two sisters, Albert Victor, George, Victoria, Maud and Alexander John. Tragically, Alexander John passed away at one day old. Louise was a granddaughter of two European monarchs, Christian IX of Denmark and Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom. Unlike their mother, Louise and her sisters were not considered to be conventionally beautiful, and they were nicknamed the Hags. They received a minimal education. The sisters were shy and quiet in public, and they often appeared to be quite withdrawn. However, in private, they were lively and flourished. Being possessive of Louise and her sisters, their mother did not want them to marry. Despite attempts to keep her daughters by her side unmarried, Louise married Alexander Duff, 6th Earl Fife, on the 27th of July, 1889, at the age of 22. He was 17 years older than her, and her third cousin through their mutual ancestor, George III of the United Kingdom. Alexander's descent was via William IV and his longtime mistress, Dorothea Jordan. Louise's grandmother, Queen Victoria, 
created Alexander the Duke of Fife and Marquess of Macduff, two days after the wedding. Despite their significant age difference, they were well matched and led a loving married life together. After their honeymoon, they settled down in the Duke's country estate in Scotland. Louise soon became an expert at salmon fishing. The couple had three children together, Alistair, Alexandra and Maud. Alistair was stillborn. In 1900, when it became apparent that the Duke and Duchess were unlikely to have any more children, and thus no son to inherit the dukedom, Queen Victoria issued an unusual letters patent for the time. Queen Victoria created a second dukedom of Fife along with the earldom of Macduff, with a special remainder. In the event that there was no male heir, the peerages would pass to the daughters of the first duke and then to their male descendants. In 1901, Queen Victoria passed away and Louise's father became Edward VII. In 1905, Louise was created Princess Royal and her daughters were granted the title of princess with the style of highness. The king was discouraged from doing this, but he ordered that it be done. Prince George, Prince of Wales, Louise's brother, and the future King George V, was disturbed by this act. In December 1911, Louise and her family set off to spend the winter in Egypt and Sudan, where the weather was more beneficial to Louise's health. Their ship went aground off the coast of Morocco and they were shipwrecked. The Duke developed pneumonia and died on the 29th of January 1912 in Egypt. Alexandra succeeded as the Duchess of Fife in her own right. After this, Louise led a somewhat reclusive life. She would occasionally accompany her mother and her sister Victoria to public events. In her later years, Louise suffered from heart disease. In October 1929, she fell ill with gastric hemorrhage and was treated for it in London. Fifteen months later, she passed away in her sleep on the 4th of January 1931. Princess Mary, Princess Royal and Countess of Harewood was born on the 25th of April 1897, the only daughter of George V and Mary of Teck. She was born during the reign of her great-grandmother, Queen Victoria whom she was named after, her first name being Victoria. Mary grew up with five brothers and was close to her eldest brother, David. Later in life, after David abdicated the throne, she visited him often and refused to attend the wedding of her niece, the future Queen Elizabeth II, out of loyalty to her brother, as David was not invited to the wedding. Princess Mary was fluent in English, French and German and like most members of her family, she adored horses. Mary was educated at home by governesses, but shared some of her lessons with her brothers. Her father became King of the United Kingdom in 1910, when Mary was 13, and her first state appearance was at the coronation of her father. Four years later, the First World War broke out. Mary accompanied her mother while visiting hospitals and organisations. She set up Princess Mary's Christmas Gift Fund, which sent out presents to all British soldiers and sailors. During the war, Mary started working as a nurse, with permission from her father. She impressed the matron by wishing to be treated just like every other nurse. After the war, she became the honorary president of the British Girl Guide Association, a position she held for life. On the 28th of February 1922, Princess Mary married Henry Lassels. They met at the Grand National in 1921 and he proposed to her in November of that year. The wedding took place at Westminster Abbey only a few months later. Despite the 15 year age gap between the couple, the couple were well matched and the marriage was a happy one. They lived at Chesterfield House and Goldsboro Hall. Following the death of her father-in-law in 1929, Lassell succeeded as the 6th Earl of Harewood with Mary as his Countess. They then moved into Harewood House. They had two sons together, George and Gerald. In 1932, Mary was created Princess Royal. 
During the Second World War, Mary visited many hospitals and devoted her time to charity work. After her husband's death in 1947, Mary continued to live at Harewood House with her son. She adored her husband and mourned deeply for him. She refused for his rooms to be changed. Princess Mary was ahead of her time in many ways. She believed that women should be able to obtain higher levels of education and she became the first woman chancellor of a university in Britain. After her niece became Queen of the United Kingdom, Mary performed royal engagements on her behalf, representing her at the independence celebrations of Trinidad and Tobago and Zambia, and at the funeral of Queen Louise of Sweden. In 1956, Mary received the rank of Honorary General in the British Army. On the 28th of March 1965, Princess Mary suffered a fatal heart attack while on a walk around her estate with her son George and her grandchildren. Her funeral was private, but a memorial service was held at Westminster Abbey. Princess Anne, Princess Royal, is the second child and only daughter of Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh. She was born at Clarence House on the 15th of August 1950, during the reign of her grandfather, King George VI. Anne's mother became queen in 1952. Princess Anne was educated by a governess, Catherine Peebles. As a young girl, her mother reformed the first Buckingham Palace company so Anne could socialise with girls her own age. It was active until 1963 when Anne went to Benedict School, a boarding school. In 1968, Anne left school with six GCE O-levels and two A-levels. She started undertaking royal engagements in 1969 at the age of 18. In 1970, Princess Anne dated Andrew Parker Bowles, who later married her sister-in-law, Camilla Shand. In 1968, Princess Anne met Mark Phillips, and they went on to marry on the 14th of November 1973 at Westminster Abbey. They moved into Gatcombe Park soon after. Phillips had been offered an earldom by the Queen, but the couple declined this. They had two children together, Peter born in 1977 and Zara born in 1981. On the 20th of March 1974, an attempt was made to kidnap Anne from her car. Princess Anne was unharmed, but several others were shot and injured. The attempt was unsuccessful. From a young age, Anne was interested in horses and horse riding. In 1971, she finished fourth at Russell Horse Trials, and at 21, she won the individual title at the European Eventing Championship. She competed with the British Eventing Team, and in 1976, she participated in the Olympic Games. During the games, she sustained a concussion halfway through her event and had to dismount. After taking a break, she finished the event. Later, she would say that she could not remember the rest of the event. From 1986 until 1994, Princess Anne was president of the International Federation for Equestrian Sports. In 1987, she was the first member of the British royal family to appear as a contestant on a TV quiz show. In 1987, Princess Anne was created Princess Royal. Two years later, on the 31st of August 1989, Princess Anne and Phillips announced their separation and divorced on the 13th of April 1992. Back in 1989, Princess Anne met Timothy Lawrence, a commander in the Royal Navy, and he was later appointed as equerry to her mother. They fell in love and were wed on the 12th of December 1992 in Scotland. Princess Anne became the first member of the British royal family to divorce and then remarry since Princess Victoria Militia of Saxe Coburg and Gotha, a granddaughter of Queen Victoria. Princess Anne is one of the hardest working members of the British royal family, going on multiple engagements every day. She is a patron of over 200 charities and organisations. On her 70th birthday, the BBC inquired if she would retire and she stated that she would not. Princess Anne inherited her father's wit and sharp tongue 
and is known to not suffer fools lightly.